This ancient Egyptian is wearing glasses. I really didn't know where to put this, but I felt it had to be addressed. Hey guys, Trip here, and welcome to Critical Hits, a show where I analyze and review stuff. You know, because no one's done that before. Today we're talking about Pharionic, a side-scrolling Dark Souls clone set in a high fantasy version of ancient Egypt. I usually don't like side-scrolling games unless they're really casual and arcadey. If you're trying to sell me an immersive experience, restricting one of my dimensions usually isn't a good start. But there's some twists and turns in this game that more than make up for its dimensional deficiency. Let's get started! You know, I really hope that one day my story is told on a bloodstained hieroglyph wall. Based on this opening, we can surmise that this game takes place during the New Kingdom, Egypt's most prosperous period. It's actually pretty cool to see them blend fact with fantasy here. Basically, Egypt took back their land from the Hyksos and decided to ramp up their military so they'd never be conquered again. The difference between the game and real life is that as far as I know, Egypt never had an evil immortal emperor as pharaoh, but you gotta take some liberties somewhere. I should probably get this out of the way now because this is going to keep coming up on this show. I'm obsessed with ancient history, especially Egypt, so don't be alarmed if I start to nerd out a bit in this game. There's evidence to suggest that Egypt invented both beer and fried food, so their civilization is already superior in my eyes. Combine that with their extensive medical knowledge, brilliant feats of engineering, love of parties, and tolerance for nudity, and yeah, you have my favorite civilization. So the game starts like most of my morning start. Dazed, confused, not knowing where or who I am, wounded, hungry, scared, and chained up in a dungeon as some cartoon priestess with giant hands spews exposition about people I know nothing about. So yeah, Tuesday. After Lana here revives us and says something or other about destiny, we're thrown into the game world. This is a Dark Souls clone, so most of the story is told in bits and pieces as you go along. I don't know. Okay, now that's just rude. Just for that, I'm gonna leave you here to think about what you've done. Good luck finding your family. This game has a heavy combat focus, but it's still an RPG. You always want to talk to everybody in this game because half of them have an item or a side quest for you, and you're going to need all you can get to beat this game. Leveling up is pretty straightforward, but upgrading your skills costs Shabti gems, which can be pretty hard to find in large numbers. So if you want to optimize your character, you're going to have to do some treasure hunting and take all the side quests you can find. Ah, oh, fuck. I guess now's a good time to mention that this is a hard game. I'll get back to that in a minute. So like any Dark Souls clone, there's no game over screen. When you die, you lose some experience, enemies respawn, and you resurrect at the nearest shrine. So let's try not to make the same mistake. Yeah, would've been good of you to tell me that the first time, asshole. See, this is why you're in the cage and I'm out here. Whew! Alright, we passed it. This is actually one of the easiest traps to avoid. The others? Oh my god, the others! So you start to piece together what's going on in this place as you delve deeper. From what I've gathered, this is a dungeon where they send people to be sacrificed to the Red Pharaoh in order to maintain his immortality. Reminds me a bit of the Emperor from Warhammer 40k. I'm okay with this. So how's the combat in this game? It's Dark Souls on a 2D plane. That pretty much sums up the gameplay as a whole, but that's not really a bad thing. As you'd expect, every swing has weight and punch behind it. Every strike is satisfying. The controls are responsive and tight, which is crucial in a game that requires twitch responses and fast reflexes. I said it earlier, but this game is brutal. To illustrate my point, I'm going to show you the first boss battle. And just like that, my story's over. Get used to that shit. Can you imagine if Lord of the Rings ended that abruptly? 
There's a definite learning curve if you're like me and not used to these kinds of games, but if you stick with it, you start to find the rhythm in the combat. Every battle is a dance of death between you and your enemies, and the game rewards caution and timing. Once you get the hang of it, you kind of fall into a zen trance as you mow down enemies without really thinking about it. It's pretty cool. This is one of those games that's punishingly difficult, but not unfair. You never feel like you're being cheated or that obstacles are impossible, and when you finally succeed, you're left with a feeling of satisfaction and a job well done. I like to imagine every enemy is a problem I have in real life. And just like real life, student loans crush me every time. So let's get back to our little playthrough. We finally get outside and... Okay, I'm trying to maintain my composure here, but I'm giddy as a fucking schoolgirl right now. This is one of the best Egyptian atmospheres I've seen in a game. Most games seem to stop at pyramids and sphinxes and call it a day, but Fairy Yonik's portrayal of Egypt permeates every aspect of the game world, and it just enhances the atmosphere. Obviously this isn't historically accurate, but you can tell these developers did their research. Everything from the dialogue, to the environments, to the descriptions on items immerses me in this Egyptian fantasy world. I want to see more games of different genres taking place in Pharionics, Egypt. Speaking of atmosphere, let's talk about the art style. Now, a lot of people aren't going to like this game's art style, because it doesn't make you want to cut yourself, but I've always been partial to colorful, cartoonish graphics in video games. Gray, brooding, photorealistic games are overdone in my eyes, and they don't often age well. The best example I can give is Age of Conan. When that game first released, people were praising its gritty, realistic art style. Not so much anymore. Point is, I'll take an unrealistic art style with a personality over realistic graphics that'll look dated in a few years. Fairy Yonic has a bit of a Pixar feel to it, and the character designs have kind of a fable thing going on. I like it. I'm not a big fan of these weird proportions where everyone's hands are bigger than their heads, but I'll just chalk that up to inbreeding, which was pretty common back then. But what I like most about the game's atmosphere is the tone it sets. I love anything that's comically violent or has a playfully dark sense of humor, and that sums up Pharionic pretty well. Nothing is really laugh-out-loud funny, but the dialogue gives me a good chuckle every now and again. Just read the descriptions of some of these items, and you'll have a pretty good idea of the tone this game is trying to set. Standard Infantry Protection died a fashionable blue to be the most stylish corpse in the field. Well worn, did their former owner a long good service. Ignore the reddish stains. This game gets me. So what's bad about this game? Not much, really. It is a bit easy to get lost and forget what you're supposed to be doing, especially since the maps are... authentic to the time period, but I never felt frustrated figuring out where to go next. The ragdoll physics did get a bit old, especially when bodies flail around like they're made out of noodles. I don't normally say this, but this is a game I think could have used more gore. It's kind of jarring and even a bit disappointing for a game with such great weapons to look like they do so little damage. And yeah, that's the bad stuff. There's not much of it. This game is pretty damn solid. There's really not much more to say about this game, at least nothing I want to risk spoiling. So why did I decide to talk about Pharionic, aside from my Egyptian fetish? Well, I found this game while feverishly searching for any kind of Egyptian game on Steam. Like I said, I'm an addict. This game came out almost a year ago, and I never even would have heard of it if I wasn't actively searching for it. Go ahead, try to find some professional reviews of this game, or even a Wikipedia article. No one's talking about this game. As usual, I had to rely on YouTubers to get any reliable information on what this game even is. And that's a shame, because I honestly think Fairy Yonic is a hidden gem, especially amidst the cesspit of indie asset flips on Steam. The Egyptian theme may have roped me in, but this is a solid game regardless. So what did we learn today? That difficulty can be rewarding, a charming art style goes a long way, and that Egypt makes everything better. Except this. 
Tune in next time for a game about a frog and math. Hey guys, Trip here, and thanks for watching the first episode of Critical Hits. I've been wanting to do more episodes on specific games, and this seemed like the best way to do it. I should also note that this episode was only made possible with the help of my Patreon supporters. You guys have given me so much these past few months, so I thought you deserved a shout out at the very least. So if you want to see me take a look at more specific games, be sure to check out my Patreon. My bloodstained hieroglyph wall is not going to fund itself. Hit that like button and make sure to share this video on Reddit and social media. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.